Hello and welcome to our virtual rhinoplasty meetings. My name is Dr. Cameron McIntosh and I'm the president of SORSA or the Society of Rhinoplasty Surgeons of South Africa. So during the coronavirus lockdown period, we decided to have bi-weekly Zoom meetings. We specifically chose teachers from around the world to be able to cover many topics. Unfortunately, due to patient confidentiality, we can't actually show you the real talks. However, the very interesting interactive question and answer sessions is what we're going to be showing you. We want to give a shout out to our colleagues around the world fighting coronavirus. Please look after yourselves and be safe. So I'm not going to say anything more. Enjoy the show. For episode three, we've moved over to Paris and France to listen to Dr. Olivia Gebalt speaking to us about using bone reshaping with ultrasonic rhinoplasty with a full open approach. Very interesting talk. Olivia, thank you very much for that. Um, can we ask questions now? Yes, would be great. Great. So the floor is open to any questions you may have. I see there's some on the chat, Olivia, if you can see that. Uh, I'm going to look on the chat. So, uh -huh. do you, so the, 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 the only uh, question I said, do you use it with drain at the end of the procedure? Yes, I, I use uh, either drain as Barish uh, is doing when he does his extended dissection, or I just do a hole, you know, in the area where I used to do the lateral osteotomy, you have a drainage inside the nasal cavity. So either a catheter or a puncture, white puncture, to allow a drainage inside the, the nasal cavity. This is the only question really that I have. Tell me if... Uh... I have one from uh, Jamil. I don't know which Jamil it is, but how do you sterilize the tip? Like every instrument, I mean, there are sterilized. In France, we have a, what we call autoclave. They are sterilized at 134 degrees. So everything is sterilized. The only thing that is disposable is a tube for the water, which costs five euros. Okay. Uh, do you, uh, so <laughs> I go very quickly. Uh, do you preservation dorsum in all case? No, not at all. I do in selected cases, but I think this question will be addressed by Eve uh, in two days. Uh, do you use the same piezo insert for lateral osteotomy during open structural rhinoplasty and preservation rhinoplasty? Yes, Philip. Uh, I, I use the same. I even use, uh, instead of using the small, um, small saw for transverse osteotomy, there are two sides of, of saws, very thin and, and thicker. I use mainly the thicker. At the beginning, I was using thin soles, and I had more difficulty to push downwards the bony vault. So to avoid a little more defect uh, for, for dorsal preservation, I used the, the thicker sole, and I put this sagittal orientation as advocated by, by gut cells to have more movement inwards of the, of the bony vault. Great. Uh, Excuse me, can I ask you a question? Excuse me. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes, very well. Yes. Um, uh, my question is about the temperature and uh, and depends um, uh, with the <clears throat> damage the skin. Have you ever heard about that? Yes, it's it's a very good question. W when you use piezo, you have thirty thousand vibration per second. You imagine thirty thousand yes. vibration, yes. so you can burn everything very easily if you don't take care. Now that's why you must have the good settings of the water outflow, which is 60 milliliters per minute. Otherwise, you may have burn. You will smell the burn, and you will have. If you burn the bone, you're going to have a callus formation. You may have a callus formation, but the worst thing is to burn the skin, of course. And that's why, if you do a full open approach, you can't burn the skin because everything is lifted. Okay, but yes. if you try to do it through a tunnel, if you try to do it through a tunnel. As for a close approach with inappropriate instruments, which are not done for close approach, then the rod may burn the nostril or the skin elsewhere, and you're going to have a burn injury. So that's why this year, uh, Actium will release those long instruments for close approach with water at 30, 60 degrees, not only water 
on the working part okay. of it. Okay. Otherwise, if you use the other tips, you may have burn. I don't know if you okay, and, uh, uh, thank you. And I also want to ask you about the rib harvest. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, don't have the time, I don't have the time here. Um, rib, using the, the soap for rib just makes the harvesting a very easy procedure without any risk because the, the piezo can't cut the pleura. So you can even give the instrument to a first year resident. You just have to cut a rectangle of, uh, of rib. Uh, you don't have to care about the perichondrium, it, except if you push very uh, tough, uh, okay. very hardly on, yeah, on, on with the instrument. But otherwise you can't, so you, you know, I, I do a lot of secondary, secondary procedure of, of stressful procedure. And you don't want to have any stress when you harvest your graft at the beginning. So it's, it takes, it's very quick. So it's just a small thing. I mean, lots of people, and there are lots of great surgeons like Nazim who, who can uh, take rib grafts very quickly without any problem. But this, you know, piezo is mainly not done for experts. It's done for average surgeon who want to achieve the same result or avoid complication the same result as experts after 30 years of experience. And I think this is one of the good things of Piezo. It gives this power to people. Thank who are you. Not I got you. Thank you. Welcome. Olivier, may I ask you a question? Hey, Johan. Hello. How are you, Olivier? Everything good Hi. in France? <laughs> I'd love to be in Germany. I think Germany is one of the countries that has been the most responsible uh, with uh, struggling well, against, against well, COVID. Well. Which we also have over 100,000 cases now, so, wow. <laughs> but may, may I ask you a favor, Olivier? Yes. I've seen on your lecture that you wrote down the numbers of those instruments you used, like RH, S1, whatever. Could you, if it's not too much, could you send those numbers to me? Because I'm yes, using yes. Axon. Also, but I, I'm not sure if I get the right and the mm -hmm. best instruments to do my osteotomy. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to give you the link to the website of Actium. Everything is on the website, so it will be very easy. You're going to have them all on, on the website. Okay, and then there are also the suggested instruments by you. Uh -huh. Or is it just a catalog of all the instruments? Well, it's a catalog. I, I have designed, as you know, the instruments for rhinoplasty. Right. Uh, so right. there are... I think they have, they have nine nine different inserts. Oh, okay, okay. Nine short one, and Johan, there will be yeah. this year three long instruments to do, and which are very useful not for closed rhinoplasty or for all the septal work when you really want to control what you do on the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid when you do high strip or cotal preserve uh, because it's very very accurate with those. So, so uh, this year, hopefully, we're going to have them also on the market. And Cameron, thank you very much for including me. This was really a great uh, experience for me. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope I'll be able to, to visit South Africa in August. We're planning a holiday in there. So. Yeah. We'll be thank telling you guys so about our meeting next year in April. I, I also just want to quickly make a note before you carry on with the questions is we're making a list of the people so that we can email you proof that you were on this forum for your continual medical education points or CPD points. Wow, great. Thank you very much again. It was really a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There, there are lots of questions and, and frankly on my small screen, I can't read them all. I don't know if you can help me, Cam, and I don't want to stay too long because you're probably all of you tired about this. I, I'd love to answer to, to those questions. And by the way, if you want, if I can't answer, you can just uh, send me an email. My email is dr, like doctor, dr.gerbault, G-E-R-B-A-U-L-T, at gmail.com, dr.gerbault at gmail.com. I'd be really glad to answer and to take time to answer to those questions because uh, there seems to be lo lots of questions and uh, they are difficult for me to, to be read. I don't know if, Cam, you have one or two questions that you can... Uh, Let me have a look quickly and see. Um, okay, I'll just take it from... Uh, uh, from Samir Habre to everyone, is the lateral osteotomy that you do more anterior than the medial collateral ligament? In other words, do you leave it attached or undermine it? Thank you. Uh, I, I don't see the medial cantal ligament because I below the periosteum. So I don't care at all about the medial cantal ligament. 
because as you know, it's not the main support of the eyelid. It's the deep medial cantal ligament, which is the, the, the real support of the, of the medial eyelid. So even if you trim it, it won't affect the support of the eyelid. But I don't, I don't see it because I'm below the periosteum. Lissandra Martins asks, do you have surgical experience in using multiple fractures to improve the hourglass shape of the nasal bones? It is a common thing to do with African noses. Mm -hmm. Well, doing multiple fracture, we all have all learned to do a, a double level osteotomy on very wide nose. I must say, I, I never now, I should say nearly never do this because by adding sculpting and osteotomy, you have a real uh, ability to narrow even very, very wide uh, nose. I didn't put on this lecture, but I, I, I've treated some uh, uh, cranial malformation with very wide nasal bones only by debulking the bones and combining uh, osteotomies. There are one uh, occasion where I do multiple osteotomies is when you have a very convex bone, which is very thin. Imagine in the lateral keystone area, if you have a very convex and thin bone, if you remove the bone, you're going to have a defect that may show under the skin. So in those cases, I do what I call a crisscross osteotomy. You know, it's vertical and horizontal osteotomies. And they just flatten gently this convexity keeping the support underneath. And it's a very effective way to treat those uh, convexities. But it's very rare to have very thin bones and to have to do this. OK, I have another question here. How do you choose between osteotomy and rhino sculpturing for wide <laughs> nasal bones? Well, when it's too wide, I never do only rhino sculpture. Otherwise, it will stay too wide. So I combine usually both. I do osteotomy to narrow the bony vault, and I use rhino sculpture to reshape convexity to have a straight sidewall. The only case where I do purely rhino sculpture are nose that are just a little too wide with a small hump, especially if you have a plunging tip that you're gonna raise, or if you have a low radix that you're gonna raise, then you can really do rhino sculpture. Uh, my friend Vichali, Zoltikov in, in uh, Russia has lots of noses with very small humps that are not very wide, and he uses a lot of rhino sculpture only. So it's, it's good. And you know, when you use rhino sculpture, Cam, uh, you say to your patients in the, in, the, in the consultation, you look at them and you say, you know, I'm not going to break your bones. And you can look at the face of your patient when you say before the surgery, I'm not going to break your bones they are very glad because they are fearing a lot about bone breaking. I have another question. How does the inferior turbinate affect your osteotomy? <clears throat> well, when, when I see, I first look inside the, the airway and I, I, I try to see if the, uh, the turbinate, if the bone is very, uh, uh, it's in hypertrophy of the bone or not. And I try, if, I, if there is a, a big uh, inferior turbinate, I try to do my osteotomy above, um, at beginning above the insertion of the head of the inferior turbinate. Now, frequently, I'm even, I'm below. I mean, I'm, I'm ignoring what we call the Webster triangle. And I, then I see how the bone moves and I always check how the inferior turbinate move. And then depending on the, if it's a uh, mucosal hypertrophy, I try to do hydrofrequent, so to, to, to reduce the, the bulk of the, of the mucosa. I remove the bone with piezo when the bone is too big, or I cut the bone to avoid the bulging of the, of the inferior turbinate. But I must say that I, I go very low, and frequently I have to do something on the inferior turbinate <coughs> uh, to avoid the obstructing the, the airway. But I prefer this cam that being higher and having, if you're too high, then you're gonna feel the bone here. Then you may have a gap and you, you have other issues. Okay, I'm gonna ask one more question here. It said, it's from uh, Abel, it says, when you just do rhino sculpture of the bony vault, you don't make modifications to the nasal tip question mark. Sorry, I didn't, what? I'll go back to it, it says, um, 
when you just do rhino sculpture of the bony vault, you don't mm -hmm. make modifications to the nasal tip. No, it's, it's completely independent. Rhino sculpture is just dealing about the bony vault. Then you, you have to deal with the uh, tip issues uh, by suture, by, by graft, by whatever. I mean, it's something very different. When I talk about rhino sculpture, it's just for the bony part of the, of the nose. Fantastic. Well, Olivia, I, I really want to thank you very, very much for an absolutely fantastic uh, talk. And uh, congratulations from all of us. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. I'm, I'm really sorry for the people who, send, who ask questions. I'm really sorry. But if, once again, don't hesitate to send them by email to me. I'll be glad to answer to all of you. I thank you very much, all of you, for staying here for this uh, lecture. Thank you very much, Cam, Thanks for, for inviting me. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to following this conference because we all learn a lot and uh, really uh, watch uh, Eve conference in today. It's a fantastic conference on dorsal yeah. preservation. If you want to understand what is dorsal preservation. And tomorrow, well, looking for, so that's, tomorrow that's we have one once again, on avoiding complication uh, with our group. Thank you very thank much. You, Brian, thank you so much for your team in thank California you, for putting this together for us.